Hey, what's up everyone? It's Chris here. I'm back on iRacing and I've got an awesome Porsche iRacing Cup race uh, coming straight from the uh, Le Mans 24-hour layout of uh, Circuit de la Sarc. Um, I started in fourth as you could see here and um, going to the first chicane I'm challenging right away for second place. I had a good breaking point. Um, I also left uh, enough room for others over here because you got to keep in mind that uh, the first chicane is quite a bottleneck uh, in any sort of race but especially those 30 minute sprint races that we have over here. Going through the S's now in second and heading for the uh, which is my in our racing most hated corner uh, Tetra Rouge because of the uh, the track limits um, on the exit over here it usually tends to give you a uh, slowdown penalty but we managed to go through here and through the entire race without any incidents whatsoever so um, well this is gonna be I don't want to take away too much in the beginning but the first two laps are definitely awesome um, I'm gonna be commentating the uh, entire race so all of the uh, 30 minutes um, for those of you who don't know me uh, that well um, I've also got a streaming channel called sim racing chris on twitch uh you can also follow me on instagram at christopher Zechling. i'm gonna leave a little annotation uh, at the bottom uh, on instagram and also on facebook anyhow um don't want to drift off too much over here um this new uh four liter equipped porsche 911 gt3 cup cars um do draft very well i gotta say in real life as they do in iRacing however um, going down the uh, the long back straight now heading towards the Monsan kink if I'm not mistaken um, they do draft well but the problem is uh, these cars top out in 6th uh, gear at around 280-285k uh, an hour um, so you really have to um, use a bit of uh, tactics and strategy in uh, these races on where you want to position yourself in the last lap and we just saw a cone flying there uh, it's just incredible seeing those cars i mean we were a pack of five going for the lead we're gonna crash in the back there and um also guys uh, let me know what you think about the beautiful pink wheels i quite like them i'm quite fond of them now we're heading towards uh, Indianapolis. Um, yeah, as I said before, oh, actually, I'm going for the lead here, which I do quite nicely, and the uh, VSR livered car tugs in right behind me and goes for P2. And then, oh, <laughs> I mean, isn't that fantastic? I mean, the reason why I chose this race um, to do a commentary over it because uh, I do race this year in the uh, German Porsche Courier Cup in real life uh, again I raced there in 2014 and 15 uh, 2016 I raced the Blanc Pont Endurance and the Lamborghini Super Trofeo in both championships in the Lamborghini respectively in the GT3 for the uh, Endurance Championship and the Super Trofeo for the Super Trofeo Cup Series um, and this year I'm back in the, uh, the Porsche Cup uh, also racing the brand new 2017 4 liter cup car and um, yeah we have had intense close racing uh, in real life and this race was as close as it gets to um, to racing the Porsche Carrier Cup or a Super Cup in real life and so um, I want to show you the uh, the race over here I think what I'll do is I'm gonna I'm gonna obviously record the entire race but uh, upload lap one and lap two and then upload the entire race separately so you guys can enjoy um, both videos respectively so now I'm in the lead going into the chicane but I'm telling you guys uh, this race is far from over now hang on I'm gonna try and play with the uh, um, the camera the camera over here Ah, uh, it's a cool camera as well, I think. He's trying to chase me down. The, 
guy also has the, the Porsche Super Cup uh, badge on his car, so he's using someone's livery from the real thing. Ah, uh, listen to the noise it makes! Ah, uh, bouncing off in the limit over here. Going into the first chicane, still in the lead over here. And we're on it again. I'm just gonna look for a nice camera angle this one. So you can guys see our battle up ahead. And I was wondering at that point why his break is so late and then I realized yeah he overshot. And uh, on iRacing they give you a slowdown penalty, so you cannot take advantage of uh, running straight. As you can see here, he had to slow down and give back at least the position he gained. And now we got the guy behind me chasing me down. Uh, he tried to go for a pass, but the uh, Patrick Dempsey livered car was there right before him. Ah, uh, look at my ass! What an awesome ass I got! Who says going to the gym for a good ass? Just look at that. Oh, you can see my name at the back. Our team, Bushwing Racing. My beautiful pink rims. On board with him. Still chasing me down. I hit my, my apex perfectly. Now we're heading up. Now we're heading up to uh, the Porsche curves. The Porsche curves are the two uh, left handers. This is quite a tricky one with the Porsche. It understeers a lot, as you can see on my car up ahead. Now in the Porsche curves. Now into uh, Maison Blanche. Maison Blanche means White House in French. Bit of a uh, language lesson over here. You also gotta be careful here at the exit not to run too wide. Oh, I just love this view. The new LED brake lights on the car, running the curb, beautiful, hard on the brakes, over the curb, ah, oh, isn't that just beautiful? At this point, I'd also like to invite you to uh, check out uh, the team that I co-founded and I'm a big part of, or I'm a part of, uh, it's called Team Bushfink Racing. Uh, we're on a um, bit of a lockup here. Ah, how realistic and awesome is this? Um, we're also on Facebook, so do check us out there and uh, hit the like button if you so wish. Always appreciate it. Speaking about lockups, um, these cars have no driving aids whatsoever, uh, no traction control, no ABS. Uh, touch of rouge one more time. Don't cut too much on the inside. I'll run out wide on the outside here as well. And uh, yeah, these cars have no driving aids, so um, just like in real life, you really gotta find a good balance. You really gotta find a good balance. Oh, <laughs> look at that! I went, uh, I went uh, a bit defensive here. You gotta do that. But still in the lead. Oh, it's so hard to stay on topic when the racing is so, so intense and so amazing. Um, yeah, like I said, no driving aids, so you really gotta, just like in real life, work hard on your braking points. Oh, I'm pushing him wide here, but he sticks his nose in. Going to the second chicane. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I keep I keep drifting off the, off the topic over here because the racing is so intense that I'm trying to be a good uh, uh, TV director over here and finding the good um, TV angles. But yeah, finding finding the sweet spot on the brakes is is very tricky in real life, and it does translate as tricky into uh, eye racing. One thing though is the the way you apply the brakes on eye racing just isn't as realistic as it is in real life so what you want to do in real life is um you wanna you wanna really get a uh, initial a very high brake peak and then bleed off and trail break into the corner whereas in eye racing you probably hit the brake about at uh, 60 65 percent or even 70 and hold it there um if you do it in real life you'll have immediately a locked up but then again that brings me to the uh, subject of um, of setup. We cannot run uh, the same setup uh, as we do in real life. I've tried it. Trust me, I've tried it. Um, it just doesn't work. So in real life, we run anywhere from 5.3 to 5.5 degree of camber angle. Um, I racing, as far as I've tried, uh, doesn't even allow that high of a front camber. On the rear, we run. Uh, in a range of 4.9 to 5.3 depending on the track temperatures and driving style uh, and on eye racing you can go as high as that but it's a bit pointless because uh, like I said the front is the uh, limiting factor in um, in eye racing so it's a bit of a shame um, I did uh, speak to eye racing about that but they haven't really uh, replied to me so if you know or find a way on how to address that setup issue regarding the real thing uh, do let me know anyways I think we're in the third lap now get coming to the fourth one I'm still in the lead um, this race is anything from over um, so far bit of pressure here from the uh, Dempsey uh, levered car if I'm not mistaken that livery was on the uh, GTE GTE M car in the uh, 24 hour uh, Lamar race uh, in 2014 or 15. Uh, I'm saying that because my good friend and former teammate um, Klaus Bachler uh, drove there. Uh, he's also racing this weekend. Um, so uh, with this video, I also wish him the best of luck as I do to my good buddy uh, Nick Team running in the uh, 95 uh, Aston Martin GTE Pro Car. I do hope he brings uh, home that victory. Because that means uh, you all of you and we all get uh, some awesome videos again. Um, also on that note, if you do uh, like and appreciate uh, this video, um, let me know. Uh, I do enjoy making those videos and uh, live streaming. I'm not on as much as I want to be because of my real life racing schedule uh, and other um, commitments. But uh, when I do find uh, a few hours um, during a day where I'm not busy with anything, then I uh, I'm definitely to be found on iRacing racing or even a set of Corsa. I do like a set of Corsa to drift a bit, but i racing is where it's at for me. The competition. Uh, we had a spin over there in the second chicane. I just saw uh, the competition. i racing is just uh, incredible. Um, I I'm quite fond of the uh, i rating system. That's sort of the trophy system, I would say. Um, I'm aiming for 4,000 I rating uh, this weekend. Going side by side now. Again, off topic, but it's just so intense. It's just so intense. A bit of a lock up here. You gotta be really uh, channel uh, with the brakes, trying to modulate your brake pressure. Ah, this is just so good. Now we have a three way battle very aggressive behind me I like that I like it a lot uh, though I have to say in this race all drivers that I was uh, racing against uh, it was very fair and very respectful uh, we gave each other plenty of room at all times um, and uh, so in that way uh, none of us had any incidents off tracks or any uh, contact related issues and that is how it should be and that's and this race to be honest is uh, it just shows um, what makes iRacing great I mean um, yes I've had a few 
quite uh, shit races, if you uh, want to call it that, um, where I've lost a lot of I rating because I was taken out by some irresponsible um, drivers. And uh, I'm just making my way back up again to uh, 4,000 I rating, like I mentioned earlier. And this race definitely made me very happy. I'm not going to say uh, which position I finished in. Um, I'm gonna keep it up in the air. Um, the last lap, I hope I don't forget to mention it, the last lap, uh, uh, something quite silly happened, um, which I will then uh, talk about. Um, and uh, <laughs> oh yeah. Anyway, um, another thing, uh, what I do like about iRacing and its uh, online competition system is that um, uh, as a race driver, you have to um, be fit, uh, physically fit and mentally fit, and uh, especially um, in both scenarios, as in what I mean by that is in a sprint racing environment uh, and also in an endurance racing environment, you've got to be especially uh, mentally fit. Um, I'm sure if you ask uh, or ask a question to a uh, Nikki team, he will um, confirm that. Um, of course, we got to work out um, quite a lot actually um, because uh, you are first of all you are what you eat and uh, if you are physically fit then there is less stress on your mind about uh, having a shoulder ache or a neck ache somewhere so if you're physically fit that definitely is already a big advantage but the main goal in a sprint oh there you saw I had a lock up I had a lock up there and obviously uh, P2 then uh, capitalized on my mistake and passed me um, so now it was my challenge to try and um, I think we're the last lap right now. It might be. Um, anyway, I'm gonna try to win this race. We got a three-way or nearly four-way battle for the lead now, as you can see. Um, going back to the uh, the fitness level in a sprint race, the reason why it's important to be mentally extremely fit is because as I was leading those four laps until the point uh, where I locked up the brakes now I didn't lock up the brakes because I had the pressure from behind I just tried to really squeeze out every last bit out of the car uh, on the brakes which as you saw just there again um, isn't that easy um, because it comes down to the fact that uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, these cars draft well, but uh, we all hit the limiter, so at some point you just can't go any faster in the draft than the guy in front of you. So I really tried to gain time on the brakes, which is very, very tricky to do in these cars. Um, but the, the mental aspect is that you have to sustain the pressure from behind, like I did when I was in the lead. Now, uh, running in, uh, in P2 here in a sandwich, I gotta keep an eye on the guy in front. I also gotta keep an eye uh, um, uh, in the in the in, in my mirrors uh, to see what happens with the guy behind me, whether he's trying to challenge me, uh, going for a move or not. Um, so we, you really are mentally quite exhausted. Um, when you're in the lead, it's a bit easier, maybe. Maybe I say um, some drivers find it easier, some drivers find it more stressful. I find it a bit easier because I don't have to focus on anyone in front of me. However, you are in the lead, so losing that position is even worse than uh, losing second place because obviously you will lose the, uh, the race victory. So for some people find it more difficult, some people less, I don't really care, I don't really mind. Um, now I think we are in the last lap and um, you can hear us now bouncing off the, uh, the ref limiter. Beautiful. I like the livery and the car. I love my pink wheels. <laughs> um, very, very close to the curbs. Sorry, guys. I'm looking for a good perspective to view the race. See, there you go, I gained time on the brakes. That's what I like to do, that's what I aim for. It's pulling a bit away through the Porsche curves. Running on the curb here. Ah, uh, this is just incredible. 
Uh, the gap is getting a bit better, bigger now, heading to the uh, the Ford chicane. Part of the break again. Watch the the cone. The cone is a track limit here. Bouncing over the curb. Beautiful. Okay, now we are definitely in the last lap. <laughs> this has to be the last lap. Running wide here. A quick shout out to uh, Pixel Dust, uh, that's uh, Jocke, our guy in our team who does all the uh, delivery for us. So a big uh, thanks to him, he does a uh, beautiful work with uh, the skins over here. Listen to this. Got a good comfortable lead over P3. On board with me now. You can see the dashboard here, very well replicated. You can see the fuel level going down, just like in real life. Now we're bouncing off the ref limiter, and that's what I meant. If you're in the draft over here, nothing happens because the guy in front of you is in the ref limiter, you in the ref limiter. Uh, these cars only really have five uh, parameters you can change. Uh, none of them are the, uh, the gearing of the transmission, so uh, every car has the same top speed in the end. Um, what you can change on these cars is uh, anti-roll bar, camber angle, toe angle, the right height and the wing. Yeah? And uh, one thing you can change while driving, which I do, which I do um, not necessarily on this track, but I did it on other tracks, is uh, the brake bias. Yeah? Uh, in real life, the brake bias, the brake bias is adjusted with that uh, red dial uh, on the right of the steering wheel. You can see R for rear, F for front. Um, what the brake bias does, it helps you with the pitch of the car. Uh, now, the car doesn't have that much aerodynamics, um, and the car is also very sensitive to uh, rake. The rake, for those who don't know, is the way the right head is set up. Um, these cars uh, tend to appreciate, bit of a moment here, um, these cars appreciate a uh, bit more rake than usual because um, you have not, you have no real um, aerodynamics on these cars. I mean, they are better than the, uh, the previous generation of the 9 and one but still, compared to the GT3 or now a GTE car like we have in iRacing, the Ford and the Ferrari, uh, these cars don't have any aero grip. So you gotta try and uh, make the most out of the uh, mechanical grip with those few um, uh, parameters that I mentioned earlier that you have available to yourself. And now, this is definitely the last lap, and you can see I've been making quite a few mistakes coming out of the last chicane and uh, the corner over here. Also making a mistake over here, and what I was thinking about wasn't actually the race at that point i was thinking on how to edit and record the video um i don't know so uh, it's safe to say i finished in second place here but um to finish the topic that i was talking about uh this car is very sensitive to a pitch by pitch i mean the weight transition um and you tend to run the car with more brake bias on the back than the front so on some poor parts where um you can you can brake really hard without uh, having the risk of locking up the front. Uh, you wanna you wanna turn the brake bias a bit forward to give the car a bit more pitch to load the front tires and therefore um, getting a bit more um, camber out of it when you load the front and then um, carrying that one or one and a half k more through the corners. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please uh, like this video so I know I'm gonna do a few more. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram, um, Christopher Turkling on Instagram, um, Sim Racing Chris on Twitch. And uh, yeah, see you on the track or the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now. Bye bye.